In this video, I'm going to be walking you through the steps that I used to build Hasegawa's 148th F4U5N Corsair. I've built a couple of these kits in the past, most recently this F4U-5, finished in the markings of the Argentinian Armada. I folded the wings using the Wolfpack Resin wing fold set. I really liked the way it turned out, and the gray Corsair was certainly unique. I wanted to build another one, but this time finishing it in the dark sea blue scheme. Let's get rolling on this full video build. Hasegawa's Corsair has been around for a while. It has been released with a number of different markings as well. While it's not quite to me a quality, it still represents a really nice kit. The box art is especially nice. I picked this kit up at a model show some time ago, and I got it for a decent price since it had been started by another modeler. I also picked up the Wolfpack Resin Cockpit set for this build since it has a good bit more detail than the kit itself especially for the cockpit seat. The instructions are typical Hasegawa and include a brief summary of the aircraft type, an overall parts layout, and a step-by-step -step illustrated building sequence. This particular boxing included markings for the U.S. and Marine Service aircraft, so to build the Argentinian version, I was going to have to source some aftermarket markings or make my own. Taking a look at the plastic parts first, you can see that interior green that was sprayed by the previous owner. The kit has really nice surface detail with recessed panel lines and rivet detail. The only real issue on the kit is the Ford fuselage mold seam that is common to all of these kits. I believe that Hasegawa modified their earlier Corsair molds to make the Dash 5 variant rather than to create a completely new fuselage master. The wings have equally nice surface details and include options for drop flaps, which I really like to see on Corsair models. The cockpit parts and engine are decent, as I mentioned, but I'll be replacing the cockpit with that one from Wolfpack Resin. There are a couple of sprues that contain the parts for the ordnance, landing gear, wheels, radar, and other bits. The cowling is molded separately and will require just a little cleanup. The clear parts are nice and thin and pretty clear. The only issue is that there is a mold seam on the main canopy that will have to be removed. Because this was a used kit when I bought it, the decal sheet was a little banged up. The markings look nice, but as I said, I won't be using these anyway for this particular build. The first thing I decided to do was deal with that annoying fuselage seam. You can see it much better here. Some kits are worse than others for some reason, and this one shouldn't be too tough to deal with. I taped off the surrounding areas around that seam so I don't have too much collateral damage when I go to sand it smooth. I used my 250, 400, and 600 grit sanding pads to carefully remove that seam and create a smooth forward fuselage section. With the tape removed, you can see the blended section and the removal of that seam. I come back in with a moistened polishing cloth and buff out the sanded section. There was a little sanding dust in the panel lines that I had to remove and I also had to rescribe a few of the panel lines. Taking a look at that resin cockpit, it has some really good detail and the fit is nice on the fuselage half. I actually started the build with the wing, gluing the wing spar inserts and then drilling out the rocket pylon attach holes in the bottom wing section. The right and left wing top sections can then be glued to the lower wing section using Tamiya Super Thin Cement. You can find a link to that along with the other materials and tools that I used in this build in the video description below. I decided to leave off the cannons until after I had sanded and painted the wing and the rest of the model to avoid breaking them during the build process. I added the oil cooler intakes to both the left and right leading edges. The radar pod attach points on the wing are not well defined. There are some small indicator lines on the wing that if you look closely you can see. I decided to make them more visible with a pencil before attaching that pod with more Tamiya thin cement. The pod itself is a two piece assembly and the seam line at the top was pretty bad so I was going to have to fill and sand that using a little Tamiya superfine putty. In my usual fashion I started painting the cockpit parts by applying a black base using Tamiya Flat Black. This was applied to all the resin parts after I had washed them in warm soapy water to remove any residual mold released agent. 
Putting down a base coat of black helps add shadows and low lights to the recessed areas in the cockpit when I come back with the primary interior green color. For the interior green, I mix a 50-50 mix of Tamiya Flat Green and Yellow Zinc Chromate. I spray this on all the cockpit components, making sure not to completely cover those recessed areas and low spots so that there's a shadowing effect. With the base interior green down, I come back in and apply an oil wash made from a mix of raw umber and black oil paints, thinned with mineral spirits. I like to do this to highlight the smaller details and start the weathering of the cockpit areas. Once the oil wash is dry on the cockpit parts, I come back in with a lighter shade of interior green made by mixing a 2 to 1 ratio of Tamiya yellow zinc chromate and flat green. I concentrate the paint in the center areas of the rear bulkhead and cockpit floor. You can see the finished effect on all of the main cockpit components. To bring out more of the detail, I come back in with a custom mix of Vallejo acrylics and I paint the high spots of the cockpit parts with a yellowish green zinc chromate. It may look a little stark at this point, but it really helps to add highlights to the parts and make them pop when they are closed up inside of the fuselage. The seat belts were painted with a light gray with silver buckles. I used Vallejo flat black to paint the headrest and the cockpit consoles. To make it easier to paint the console switch details, I dry brush them with a little khaki. The key here is to make sure to remove nearly all of the paint using a clean, dry paper towel. I use Vallejo gray and white to paint the individual cockpit gauges and switches, picking them out one by one. I also used a little neutral gray to paint some of the individual console panel sections to add just a little variation. The seat was glued to the cockpit floor using a drop of super glue. To paint the instrument panel, I used the same detailed painting techniques that I had done for the cockpit switches. I used white to paint the individual details for each instrument gauge. I followed that up with a drop of epoxy on each gauge to simulate the instrument bezels. When that had fully dried, I glued the panel to the cockpit tub. Make sure to let the epoxy fully cure or it will dull to a flat finish if you touch it before it is dry. The sidewalls were painted and installed on the cockpit tub, and then the tub was inserted and glued into place using a few drops of superglue. With the cockpit tub installed on the left fuselage half, I could check the overall fit of the tub into the fuselage by dry fitting the right and left fuselage halves together. The fit was really good, so I used Tamiya Superfine Cement to glue them together. It's so thin it just runs into the smallest of gaps to bond the plastic pieces. Since I had already completed the wing assembly, I could test fit the wing to the fuselage. Once again, the fit was really good, so I just used that Tamiya Cement to install the wing to the fuselage. There were a few seams that needed a little filler, so I used Tamiya Superfine Putty to fill them and once dry, sanded them smooth. I also sanded all of the other seams on the fuselage and wings in preparation for painting. I used Tamiya's Fine Surface Primer to prime the model and to make sure that all of the seams had been filled satisfactorily. I installed each of the six individual flap sections, once again using Tamiya Thin Cement. Here's how it looked headed into the painting stage. Since the Corsair was going to be finished in a dark sea blue, I didn't bother with any pre-shading. For the sea blue, I used a custom mix of Tamiya dark sea blue and Tamiya flat blue mixed at a ratio of about 6 to 1. I made sure to spray the blue into the wheel well areas and eliminate that interior green that had been applied by the kit's previous owner.
To start to give the paint a little extra depth and dimension, I mixed up a little Tamiya Field Blue and applied it inside of each individual panel. At this point, things start to look a little splotchy, but not to worry, it will all be blended in during the subsequent painting and weathering stages. To start to blend things a little, I come back in with some straight dark sea blue and airbrushed along each of the panel lines. Using a random pattern, I also sprayed a really thin coat of dark sea blue inside of select panels. To begin to add some weathering, I use the technique I've shown in a previous video, applying a liberal coat of white spirits directly to the flat paint. On top of that, I apply raw umber oil paint straight from the tube with a fine tip brush to areas where dirt and grime would likely collect or be deposited. I came back in with a clean brush and clean white spirits and blended or removed the raw umber into and from the model. I worked in small sections so I could check progress and effects as I go. I also concentrate on those areas that were likely more worn, such as in and around the cockpit entry points and gun access panels. I followed up the raw umber with a lighter shade of dark sea blue, cobalt blue in this case. Just like the raw umber, I blended and removed the excess paint into and from the model surface. To start adding even more highlights to those worn areas, I mixed up a little white with the cobalt blue. Again, I'm using the oil paint directly from the tube and applying a liberal coat of that white spirits to allow me to blend and remove them as much or as little as I like to get the desired weathering effects. I don't go too crazy with this light blue mixture. I apply it selectively to a few access panels and areas that might have seen the most wear or fading from operational use. The light blue is then removed using a clean brush and more clean white spirits. I used more spirits to blend the light blue weathering effects into the wing and reduce the overall contrast. Things still look a little stark, but once I apply a gloss coat, the oil wash to the panel lines, and a flat coat to seal everything in, things will become a good bit more uniform. To paint the anti-glare panel and leading edge de-icer boots, I taped off those areas with Tamiya low tack masking tape and airbrushed those sections with Tamiya flat black. After the black was down, the tape was removed to reveal the subtle but obvious contrast between the blue and the black. You can see the weathering effects from those raw umber, cobalt blue, and light blue filters. The radome was masked and sprayed with a coat of Tamiya Neutral Gray. I had a buddy with a spare set of Argentinian decals from the excellent Victory Productions decal sheet. It comes with decals for blue and white rudder and elevators, but I chose to mask and airbrush those to give a more realistic look. I first airbrushed the white using Tamiya Flat White. I then came back in using Tamiya Sky Blue and airbrushed the blue sections on the rudder and elevators. Doing the blue and white in this way might seem like a little bit more work, but I never really trust that the decals will match the shape of the control surfaces or settle down to give a painted on look. All the tape is removed to reveal the final look. Those blue and white stripes really bring a nice contrast to the monochromatic dark sea blue finish. With all of the airframe painting complete, I gloss coated the entire model using AK Gauzy's Shine Enhancer. This provides a nice glossy finish for the decals as well as the oil wash that I will be applying to the panel lines and rivets. It also helps to blend in some of those more splotchy weathering effects. To apply the decals, I first coated the area where the decal would be applied with a liberal amount of AK's decal setting solution. I soaked each decal in warm water and then slid it into place over the setting solution. I applied another coat of the solution to the decal once I had it in the correct position. I worked my way around the entire model using the same process. 
applying each decal to the airframe, and continuously checking my references to assure the correct placement. Make sure to do this as Argentinian Corsairs had different anchor marking placements on the wings that were unique to a specific tail number. To bring out the panel line and rivet detail, I used AK's panel liner for black surfaces. It's a light gray color. I was initially afraid that it would be a bit stark, but by applying it more sparingly to only the panel lines and rivets, and then removing most of the wash after it dried, it provided just the right amount of contrast that I was after. I like to keep things moving, so while I waited for the panel line wash to dry in some areas, I airbrushed the engine cylinders with Tamiya aluminum and then applied a dark oil wash to bring out all of the details. Here's how the model looked after I had all of the panel lines and rivet details washed and wiped away. Maybe a little stark looking given the glossy finish, but things will be toned down with a matte top coat. I used Model Master's flat from a spray can for that flat top coat and to seal everything in. It was a little flat for my taste, so I taped off the flat black de-icer boots and anti-glare panel and using a really thin coat of that AK gauzy, added a little sheen back to the dark sea blue. While that was drying, I painted the engine crankcase and components with a neutral gray and weathered things in with a raw umber wash. I also picked out some of the engine details using Vallejo light gray and white acrylic paints and a fine tip brush. The engine was installed on the rear bulkhead after I had painted that with the interior green color. I also installed the exhaust directly onto the bulkhead and inserted the entire assembly inside of the cowling. It's a tight fit, but things do go together pretty well. To make sure I didn't get overspray on the engine, I taped off the cow opening before airbrushing the cow with the dark sea blue mixture. With the engine and cow assembly complete, it could then be installed onto the fuselage. I masked and airbrush the anti-glare panel and use the same techniques to weather the cowling to match the rest of the airframe. The landing gear is a multi-part assembly and goes together easy enough. The kit wheels are nice, but they are not correct for the Argentinian Corsairs. Those aircraft use a late-style stamped hub. Fortunately, Ultracast offers a really nice set that not only has the right hub detail, it also has some really nice block tread. I painted and weathered the landing gear and wheels following the same processes as before. I painted the arrestor hook with the black and white stripes and this really helped add more detail to the finished model. After installing the cannons and rocket stubs, I painted the forward sections of those cannons with Vallejo flat red. Now I mentioned at the start of the video that the canopy, while nice, had a mold seam running down the middle of it. You can see it clearly here. To remove that seam, I used various grades of sanding pads and a polishing cloth. I worked my way from 400 grit all the way to 12,000 grit, wet sanding each successively finer grit. When that was complete, I used a paper towel and some polishing compound to buff everything out. To really make things shine, I dipped the canopy in some of that AK gauzy and then covered it up to prevent any dust from collecting on it. I allowed this to dry overnight. The results are a crystal clear main canopy with no pesky seam line. The Wolfpack resin set comes with a nice little gun sight and the extra details that were on the forward instrument panel combing. I installed those using small drops of super glue and then painted them with Vallejo acrylics. I added a small piece of clear plastic to represent the reflector gun sight. I masked and sprayed both the windscreen and main canopy, first with a coat of flat black and then with a coat of that dark sea blue mix. The flat black that goes down first helps to represent the inside of the cockpit color. When that was complete, I installed the windscreen and canopy to the model. I added all of the smaller details, including the various antenna, wheels, pedo, and antenna wire. Hasegawa's 148th F4U5 is an excellent kit. 
Finishing it in the Argentinian markings helps to make it a bit more colorful and certainly more unique. I hope that you enjoyed this Corsair full video build, and I hope that it inspires you to tackle a build of your own. Please leave me some feedback and let me know what you like or didn't like about this particular build feature. I appreciate you checking out the channel once again, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already to get the latest updates as I post new tips, tricks, and full build features to help you build better looking models. We'll see you next time.